Okay, in this video we're going to look at another formula for the curvature of a vector valued function. So let's recall in the previous video we proved that if we have a vector valued function r of t, so that's defining a curve in n dimensional space, its curvature is given by this thing that we call kappa, which is the magnitude of t prime divided by the magnitude of r prime, where r prime is just the derivative of r and t is given by the magnitude of r, or sorry, it's given by r prime divided by the magnitude of r. So sometimes this is called the unit tangent vector. And so since it's called the unit tangent vector, well that means it must be a unit vector. And it is because we're taking a vector and dividing by its length. And so we're going to use the following observation in the proof. And that is since uh, the magnitude of t is 1, we know that t is orthogonal to t prime. So we proved this in a previous video where we looked at propositions involving the derivative of a vector valued function. So in other words, the angle between t and t prime is pi over 2, and so we'll call that theta for our proof. Okay, so um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is uncover what t prime looks like, given that t is defined as follows. So we'll take the derivative of this unit tangent vector t. So notice that's the same thing as t prime. So uh, that's going to be the derivative with respect to t of the scalar function 1 over the magnitude of r prime times the vector function r prime. Good. So notice that that gives us r double prime over the magnitude of r prime. Here we're using the product rule. And then it's going to give us plus 1 over the magnitude of r prime squared times um, r prime. Sorry, not squared, but the derivative of 1 over the magnitude of r prime. So it might, it might seem like a cheat that we're not going to actually calculate this. For our argument, it'll all come very cleanly just with the parts that we have right here. And now the next thing I want to do is look at the magnitude of t prime. And notice that the magnitude of t prime is the same thing as the magnitude of t prime times the magnitude of t. Given that the magnitude of t is 1, I've just multiplied that by 1. And now the next thing that I can do is rewrite this as the magnitude of t cross t prime times sine of theta, where theta is the angle between t and t prime. And so we know that because this sine theta is 1 in this case, given that the sine of pi over 2 is 1. And we've already made this observation from a previous um, video where uh, these things are orthogonal to each other. Okay, great. So now the next thing that I can do is take the cross product of t with t prime. So let's see what we get there. So this is going to be the magnitude of, so t is um, r prime over the magnitude of r prime cross, and now we're going to cross that with r double prime over the magnitude of r prime plus 1 over the magnitude of r prime prime times r prime. So that's the calculation that we need to do. So notice that's going to give us the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime over the magnitude of r prime squared. And so we get that from crossing this with this, and we're using uh, the distributive rule of the cross product over vector addition here. And then we have that is plus 1 over the magnitude of r prime times 1 over the magnitude of r prime prime times the vector part, which is r prime cross r prime. Great, so we've got something like that. Um, and that is from distributing here and here.
Okay, good. Now the next thing that we'll notice is that whenever we cross product a vector with itself, we get zero. And so that's a fact that we went over when we were defining the cross product. So that means this part cancels out to zero, which is really nice because that leaves us with only this term, which we can rewrite as the magnitude of R prime cross R double prime over the magnitude of R prime squared. And that's essentially the end of the proof because now if we divide this magnitude of T prime squared by the magnitude of R prime, um, we're going to get exactly this formula up here. Great. So that finishes the proof. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at some examples. Okay, so now we're going to use this theorem to find the curvature of the following curve. So we have one-third t cubed, one-half t squared, and t. So we're going to first calculate r prime. So that's pretty easy. That's just going to be t squared, t, and 1. Now the next thing we'll do is calculate r double prime. So that's going to give, be given by 2t, 1, 0. Okay, so we've got it. So now we need to know the magnitude of r prime. So that happens in the denominator here. So that's going to be given by the cross product, sorry, that's going to be given by the dot product of r prime with itself. And then we take the square root. Great. So that's not too bad. That's going to give us the square root of t to the fourth plus t squared plus one. So that's what we get for that magnitude. And then we need to find the cross product of R prime with R double prime. So we'll use the matrix version of the cross product. So we have I, J, K, and then here we have T squared, T1, 2T, 1, and 0. Good. So we're going to expand this about the first row. So here we have in this quantity, which is going to give us the first entry of the cross product, we'll have t times 0 minus 1 times 1, so that gives us minus 1. Good. So next we'll do the second column and the first row. So that's going to give us t squared times 0 minus 1 times 2t, but then there's a minus sign built into the formula here, so that gives us 2t. And then finally we'll do the last column and the first row. And so that's going to give us t squared uh, minus 2t squared. So that's going to give us minus t squared. Fantastic. So now we find the magnitude of that vector. So r prime cross r double prime. So that's going to be the square root of 1 plus 2t times itself plus negative t squared times itself, so that's going to be t to the fourth plus 4t plus 1. So there we get that for the magnitude. Now we can put this all together, so we're going to want to divide this by all of this cubed, so that's going to give us kappa is given by the square root of t to the fourth plus 4t squared plus 1 over t to the fourth plus t squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power. Okay, and that is the final answer for this curvature. Okay, so before the end of the video, I want to do one more thing, and that is apply this formula to find the curvature of a curve in the plane. Okay, so we want to finish this video off by finding the curvature of y equals f of x, so just a curve in R2. So the first thing we want to do is build a parameterization of this curve that uh, is a vector equation. And so we can do that by letting r of t equal, so we'll have t for the x-coordinate, we'll have f of t for the y-coordinate, and then we'll have 0 for the z-coordinate. So this curve is living in three-dimensional space but it's down on the xy axis. Okay, good. So from here, we'll want to find r prime. So that's easy. That's just 1 f prime of t and 0. And then we can find the magnitude of r prime pretty easily. So that's going to be the square root of 1 plus f prime of t 
squared. Good. Now, next we need our double prime. So notice that's going to be the vector given by 0, f double prime, 0. And from there, we need to calculate the cross product of R with R double prime. So we'll use the matrix method again for that. So here we'll have I, J, K. So R prime is given by 1, F prime 0. R double prime is given by 0, F double prime 0. So now working in the first row and the first column, Notice that's going to give us just zero. So the first entry of this thing is just zero. Now let's go ahead and work in the second column in the first row. And notice that's also going to give us zero. And that's because we've got two zeros over here. Good. And then finally, in the last column and the first row, what we're going to get is 1 times f double prime minus 0 times f prime. So in other words, we're going to get f double prime. So next, the magnitude of this is pretty easy to see. That's just going to be um, the magnitude of f double prime, uh, which will be the absolute value of f double prime. So... We can apply our formula right here, and that's going to give us this curvature is given by the magnitude of F double prime divided by 1 plus F prime of T squared, and then this whole thing to the 3 halves. Okay, great. So that's the formula for the curvature of a plane curve, and that's a good place to end this video.